Welcome to Humpty's study. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood, but here we are inside. I'd like to take a look at what it means to be a basis and what you can use as a basis for something. So let's just begin with the plane. And there's a standard basis for the plane, one zero and zero one two linearly independent vectors in the plane. And somewhat at random, let's create a new basis. Any two linearly independent vectors will be a basis. So one, two, and uh, let's say three, one. This would also be a basis. Now, each basis gives you a way of describing any point in the plane in another, that's another way that basis is used as the word. These are bases for describing anything in the plane. So if we take a rather random point of the plane, 10, 13, you can write it in terms of the standard basis as 10 times one zero plus 13 times zero one. And in fact, what we have here is the standard form for any vector. Um, so all of these vectors are sort of standard form vectors. They are like a language. So positions are like what we're trying to describe. And these vectors are how we describe it. They're our language for description. But you can also write the point 10, 13 in terms of these two vectors. So let's just uh, see if we can do that. So if we take the vector 10, 13, it will be something times the vector 1, 2, plus something else times the vector 3, 1. We know that these two vectors span R2, so we know we can do that. And uh, let's just set that up. So this is solving the system of equations. A plus 3B will be equal to 10. And 2A plus B will equal 13. So I'm going to fire up Mathematica and use Mathematica to solve this. So we will. OK, back from my little excursion with Mathematica. First thing I noticed is I didn't erase enough here. So in order to solve these, these are the equations, a plus 3b equal 10. But we don't want to write the a's and b's here when we write the matrix. So this is the matrix that we want to row reduce. When we do, we knew we were going to get 1, 0, and 0, 1 here. Over here, we get 29 fifths, and here we get 7 fifths. So that means that this vector can be written and in terms of these two basis vectors from B1, and the solutions are this. So 10 13 equals 29 fifths times 1, 2 plus 7 fifths times 3, 1. OK. So now we're going to divide the board into two places, the standard speaker and a language one speaker. Standard speaker and language one speaker. So I give the standard speaker comes up with 10 thirteenths and wants to communicate this to the B1 speaker. B1 speaker does not speak standard language. So if we tell them 10 13, B1 would understand the coordinates 10 13 as 10 times their first vector, which is 1 2, plus 13 times their second vector. 3, 1. 
And the position here, the fact that 10 is first tells it that this means 10 times its first vector. So they would understand this completely differently. In other words, this position, which is a position in the plane, is understood differently if you are using the language based on B1. So what is what do we tell them? What does the standard speaker tell them? They tell them in their own language, they tell them 29 fifths and seven fifths. Then the B1 speaker will understand this is 29 fifths of this vector plus seven fifths of this vector. Now, when thinking this way, it is good not to think numerically, but in terms of the geometry of it. So again, above the line is the standard speaker and they have the two standard directions, one zero and zero one. And when we tell them, when we say in standard language 10, 13, it means you go 10 units this direction and then you go 13 units in this direction and you get to the position 10, 13. Maybe I should have picked the smaller numbers. Down here, the directions are different. Uh, the origin is the same, but the first vector is one, two. So their first vector is in one this direction, two this direction. So there is their first direction. And their second direction is three, one. So now in order to get this to this exact same position, how do they do it? They take 29 fifths, almost six, but not quite. One, two, three, four, five, six in this direction. And then in this direction, they take seven fifths and they get to the same point, right? Right over here off screen at this point right here, but this point is the same as this point. So this basis allows you to describe any point in the plane, even the ones that are off on the side, uh, almost out the door, but these coordinates are different. So if you are describing things using this basis, you need to interpret uh, the results in terms of your standard basis. Uh, I'm gonna work on a, another problem with this. I'd like to go back the other direction, but I'd, I'd like to show you how this is useful and it's used a lot. Here is a uh, three-dimensional example of how this is used. If you have a airplane flying around or a drone collecting information and, uh, and they see something that's interesting, UFO, the way they find it is in terms of their directions. The forward direction, the basis for which they understand space, the forward direction is directly out the nose of the plane. That's the way the radar looks. That's what they see. The secondary direction is directly off the right wing. So this is 90 degrees. And the third direction is up from there but that means mutually perpendicular to those. So these are three mutually perpendicular vectors. They're given a name, T, N, and B. And this plane sees the UFO according to those coordinates, maybe uh, two and a half up maybe negative one in the end direction and maybe one up. But these are not the coordinates of the ground down here. And we have a ground station with 
bring its own radar and so on. Its three coordinates are north, east, and up, but up is defined uh, perpendicular to the ground. It's straight up. And so these two have to communicate back and forth. So they need to change these coordinates, which are the planes coordinates, to the standard coordinates and vice versa. And this is all done automatically now by machinery. But in this way, the plane can radio the location back to the ground and the ground can see that UFO. So that's what we're doing here is that kind of process. Now the key idea to doing this is change of basis is a linear transformation. Changing language is a linear transformation. So if we live over here in standard land, Over here will be basis B1 land. We want to translate back and forth. And I'll use T for translation. When I gave you that this basis was 1, 2, and 3, 1, I gave these vectors in standard notation. B1 understands this as 1, 0. It is its primary vector, which it understands is 1, 0, which means one of these and none of these. It understands its secondary vector as 0, 1. So the way B1 understands its own basis is 1, 0 in terms of its basis. I'll just put a 1 here. And 0, 1, its first basis vector and its second basis vector. And then the coordinates mean 29 fifths times this plus seven fifths times this, that's the location. But to us, it means 29 fifths times this plus seven fifths times three one because we speak the standard language. So the analysis I gave you works both ways. Uh, if we were in B1, I would have given the same analysis and written these vectors in terms of the B1 coordinates and so on. But this is the transformation that is easiest for us to do since we speak the standard language. And this T has a matrix representation. T is represented by the matrix and we know what the columns are. You take the first vector and write it in standard coordinates. Well, that's how it was given. And you take the second vector and translate it. That means find T of it. And that's how it was given. So translation to the standard is considered to be, I mean, this is really In order to go the other direction, you have to find the inverse matrix. So translating back and forth between these two bases amounts to translating, uh, finding T from the standard, uh, from the uh, B1 basis to the standard, and then translating back with the inverse matrix. And this is the basis of changing the basis uh, from one vector space to another. In, in class, before we do breakout rooms uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, we will do a little bit of, uh, of this translation ourselves. So I'll kind of divide the class into a couple areas and we will try to, we will try to communicate with each other. Maybe I'll just have two breakout rooms, two different languages and we'll translate back and forth. 
In any case, I will see you tomorrow. I'll put up a little homework to take a look at and see you soon.